Fire Internet. I'm Funky Monkey with another untold tale from the Marvelous Legends. Only, this tale might not be all that marvelous. Oh, it's certainly as epic in scope as any of the others. Perhaps even more so, but... Well, you'll see. Let's begin at the beginning, though, and give this tale a proper introduction. <laughs> Released in 2017, Thor Ragnarok is an altogether more humorous take on the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Thor looks to find his father and prevent Ragnarok, but his long-lost sister Hela has other plans. And in the process, we discover where the Hulk ended up after Ultron. Gaining an audience rating of 87% on Rotten Tomatoes, it certainly seems like another rambunctious romp in the mighty Marvel tradition. So grab your popcorn and giant foam hands as we ride along with the Odin Sons to the Asgardian Apocalypse in... Thor Ragnarok. Thor's Infinity Stone quest has led him to Surtur, prophesied bringer of Ragnarok. This is where Thor discovers what Loki's been up to, deposing his father Odin, which has unknowingly set Ragnarok in motion. And for his troubles, at least Surtur's death is a quick one. But the new guardian of the Bifrost isn't as all-seeing. Still, Thor ends up back on Asgard, and promptly sees through his brother's illusion. But oh dear, Odin isn't where Loki left him. And with the help of Doctor Strange, all right, bye -bye. Father and son are finally reunited. Sadly, the All-Father can't keep the secret any longer, and we meet our villain, Hela. Goth. Drowned and rat are the three words that spring to mind. And she's strong enough to resist even Mjolnir, and to eject the Odin sons from the Rainbow Bridge. Thor ends up on the planet Sakaar. Sakaar? Where have I heard that name before? Oh. That Sakaar. Or at least the MCU version of it. And if you have heard the name, you can guess what happens next. And we meet the Master of Sakaar, the Grand Master, that presides over the Contest of Champions, which is actually just glorified pit fighting. And our hero only has to beat the Grand Master's champion to get his freedom. Hela's making her presence known, and rebuilding her army. But just look who the Grand Master's champion is! And they fight. Which we're skipping because YouTube. You know how it is by now. Thor almost wins, but the Grand Master's a tricksy one. I wonder if Marvel fans still talk about the Sakaar screw job. But Thor still needs off this rock. Hulk follows. Until love rears its ugly head. <sighs> Thor and a confused Bruce Banner make their way through the streets of Sakaar. And someone else joins the budding Revengers. This is a Valkyrie, specifically the last Valkyrie, only survivor of the final charge when Hela slaughtered all the other Valkyrie, leading Loki to complete the team. But they still need a ship, and so the Odinsons head out to fetch one. Thor's speech here about being more than just your title is a lovely character moment and it plays well into Loki's Disney Plus show. Our heroes make for the central and largest wormhole. I'm going to put up the colloquial name for the central wormhole of Sakaar on screen here. But when you reverse this, it's either a massive spoiler for a book that I haven't read, or an infinite lives cheat for an old Commodore 64 game. Perhaps both. Maybe neither. And so to Asgard to set the stage for our finale. Thor draws out Hela, while Heimdall makes his last stand. Enter Loki, with the means to evacuate Asgard. And some wise words from Odin. Awaken the true power of Thor! But Hela is Asgard, so there's only one way to stop her. The prophecy states that if Surtur's crown was anointed with the Eternal Flame, his power would be massively increased, 
and he would be all but unstoppable and destroy Asgard. Which isn't so great, but it's the only way to put down Hela's omnicidal tendencies. And so, Hela is defeated, and the Asgardians head off towards their destiny. But oh dear! And you know the rest. But anyway, that was Thor Ragnarok. And while I have thoughts about the more comedic elements of this film, I still can't deny that this is a tale worth telling. There is a part of me that wants to hate this movie. Director Taika Waititi deliberately leans into the comedic elements, making this great imposing hero with the power of thunder into a meat-headed jock prince who can barely walk and think at the same time. And the less said about how they used the framing elements of Planet Hulk and came up with this, the better. But then, for all the idiocy of our heroes, for all that Korg and Meek are reduced from major players with their own dramatic arcs to mere comedic bit parts, for all the stripping of Thor's great power, it does lead him to become more powerful than ever, in a joyous action climax which wouldn't have hit so hard without the levity leading up to it. And of the performances, Hemsworth and Hiddleston still play beautifully off one another. Kate Blanchett radiates menace as Hela, goddess of death, and Mark Ruffalo's Hulk is very much the comic Hulk finally realised on screen. Jeff Goldblum, however, is essentially Jeff Goldblum as the Grandmaster, and Tessa Thompson's Valkyrie, while she does get a satisfying arc, is still rather underplayed in my opinion, but we must mention Carl Urban's Scourge here, whose discomfort with the role fate gave him shows on his face, and his last stand shows what his measure really was. Let's not forget that this movie is mostly a comedy, and it is genuinely funny in places. Ridiculous that Loki, masquerading as Odin, let the outside empire fall to ruin, and left the Allfather to die in Norway, but it's also supposed to be an homage to the sci-fi and fantasy movies of the 80s, the low-budget, high-concept stuff, which the synthy score by Mark Mothersbaugh reinforces, and some of the jokes don't land, like the awkward spinning around bit at the beginning, or the mental image of a naked Hulk. So is it a bad movie? No. Is it a bad MCU movie? No. The story is quite slight though. After the hectic action beats of both Age of Ultron and Spider-Man Homecoming, there's a lot less to this one. Odin fades, Hela rises, our heroes are stranded on Sakaar and fight their way home again, only to cause the titular apocalypse. In the end though, and being as fair as I can be, this is another rip-roaring romp in the mighty Marvel tradition. And while I feel that it leans a little too heavily on the comedy, to the detriment of the characters at points, I can't deny that it balances those moments with the adrenaline fueled action that puts backsides in cinema seats and sells disc-based home releases. I've been Funky Monkey, inviting you to join me next time on this continuing journey across the stars, when we uncover a missing Infinity Gem, and the misfits who are trying to protect it. See you there!